Hey, Dental Nachos crew, it's Paul, Dr. Nacho. I have a question for you. Are you ready for September? How are you going to handle September? Maybe we should start by not calling it September. I'm here with key resource and sponsor, my friend, awesome Nacho, Zanya Winans, and she's going to share with us for some strategies to avoid September, things we should be thinking about now. Zanya, thanks for being on Spicy Toppings with me, Dr. Nacho. Uh, share with our audience first what you do and how you help dentists, and then some strategies to avoid September. Sure. Thanks for having me on. Um, so I am the CEO and founder of Golden Proportions Marketing. We are uh, just about the largest full service dental marketing agency in the country now. Um, so we've been around for close to 20 years and our job is to basically help. It's not just marketing, it's about growing businesses. And that's a lot of what I want to talk about today because I'm seeing a lot of practices get stuck because of this crisis that we're in. And they're all getting focused on suck timber because that's such an easy thing to get excited about. And in reality, I want them to just totally throw that idea out of their mind. And um, we're going to look at it in a whole new way. Awesome. I mean, you know, I think this is the time to do this, you know, recentering expectations, recentering your life during a pandemic, not a better time to, to do it. So what are some ways, let's say, you know, I own two practices. You know, I've always heard about this September. I mean, honestly, I can't really remember, maybe because I don't remember anything before the pandemic has just taken our life. Were we busy? Were we not busy? I know I talk about kids going back to school. That's obviously been a little change. So what are some things that we can do risk ass assessment wise to prepare ourselves? So the problem with September is that everybody's thinking about it as if it's the same way that it was every past year, that just because kids are going back to school, that that's when the practices start to get a little slow, but then it pops back up in October and November. We know we're a little slower in December and January's big. That is not the way the world is anymore. It is, we've got to get out of this mindset of trying to go back to what was normal because normal is dead. We are never going to go back to normal the way we were thinking of it. And if that's where your mind is, you're going to be completely stuck in this crisis mode that everybody's been in for the past six months. Yeah. So uh, honestly, um, suck September isn't the problem. It's suck October and suck November and suck 2021. It, yeah. it, we are just thinking of reacting to what's happening right now instead of looking forward. I want to get my example of this here. Uh, it's, my, it's my friend. It's how Dennis feel on the inside. Mr. Grumbly, he's here all the time. So how, and I think you're exactly right, but what can we do? And I think that's, I've been thinking the same way because, you know, we were shut down, closed down, whatever you want to call it, you know, in March and April. Patients are trained, you know, make their six month appointment. The hygiene schedules are not as full. So what are you advising some of your clients to do at this time? So what we're actually advising to do is, uh, and, and this is going to be a little more philosophical than it is actual hands on. What do I do? Um, everybody is stuck in the response mode. Like, what do I do now that I'm open again? How do I communicate with my patients? Um, keeping my schedule full, all those kind of things. But we have got to start moving people towards the future mindset. And there's three stages of that. The first one is revising. So they people have got to start looking at what am I currently doing that I'm never going to do again, that I need to do differently. Basically, any plans that you had for this year are dead. You need yeah. to just completely start over. Treat this like it is December and you're planning for 2021. The time to do that is right now. Um, and then the idea is, you it, again, you're starting completely from scratch. So you get to set entirely new goals, um, decide what your objectives are, and determine how is your practice going to be completely different from every other practice out there because everyone else is trying to get back to normal. That's fine. Let them get back to normal because if you plan properly, you can actually get ahead I so think, I think it's it's way more than just getting the hygiene schedule full, which is what everybody's focusing on. It's changing patients' mindset about how dentistry is going to be for the future. And I like to use an example. You know, there's a guy I mentioned on Nachos one or 8,000 times, Gary V, who I love. And, you know, I was on his tea with Gary V, which was an honor for me. But he talks about, we're about the same age. He talks about an experience that I had as a young person where I did not want to give up my BlackBerry. I did not want to touch screen phone. I thought, mm -hmm. who doesn't want to type on the BlackBerry? I was really resistant to that change. I came to it too late. He talked about that happening to him too. So think of that in your dental practices. 
you know, your BlackBerry, you know, uh, keyboard is now changing and it, you can look at it with an opportunity to sometimes shed some of the things that you didn't like anyway. And, you know, there's never a better time to use this excuse, uh, and not even excuse to use this why of the pandemic, whether it's shifting status with insurances, like we're doing, whether it's changing the days and times you do things. And I just think of all the things that are challenging, that's a great it's a great time as a practice owner, a business owner, to have some creativity. So I like that. So first we had, first R was revise. I like that. The first R is revise. The second R is resolution. And um, so it's not just the pandemic that we're in, it's the pandemic that triggered the recession that we're in. And so part of the reason revision is so important is because unless you are 55, 60 years old, you're gonna go through another recession. It's a near guarantee they happen. Um, about every 10 years on average, we were overdue for this one. Yeah. So people that are panicking, that are making their decisions out of sheer reactionary panic are the ones who are going to be completely toast by the next recession. Did you know there's actually 9% of businesses grow in a recession? Yeah. That means that 91% of them are like flatlining. So if you can conquer these couple of steps, you'll be one of the ones that's growing. And I'm speaking from experience because we went through the great recession and did it the way everybody else did it, learned those lessons. We were prepared. We are having absolutely record years this year because we were able to walk into this recession beyond prepared. So within the resolution, there's a couple of key things that doctors have to do. Um, and this is not natural to a lot of doctors. One is they have to become really fast decision makers. They cannot ponder every decision to death. There's a great statistic that not says people entrepreneurs. It's not people who want a bite wing of a bite wing and a CBC. CBC. They want to study on things that haven't been done yet. So yeah, I, if you're listening, Dennis, great tip. Being a fast decision maker, especially in things that are not critical. When it comes to patient care, or maybe if you're going to do something on a tooth, you can. What's interesting, Zania, and it's actually, uh, it's foolish me to say, they actually become fast decision makers with dental care because that's mm -hmm. what we do all the time. And that feels comfortable. You know, save a tooth like Private Ryan, replace it with an implant. They can do that. You know, spend more on marketing, do Facebook ads, enhance your website, change insurance. That's when they get stuck in analysis paralysis. So I think that's a key point. You want to make faster decisions, especially with your business. Yeah, you really do because the decisions, people are convinced that they make one bad decision, it's going to screw their business. It's not about whether or not you make a good or bad decision. It's about how quickly you notice that you've made a bad decision and you fail forward and you fail fast. Right. So in general, entrepreneurs that make fast decisions, about 70% of their decisions are right. So yeah, that means three out of 10, not going to be right on target. But if you're watching them and you're measuring things, then you can move really quickly and pivot just like they do within dentistry. I mean, when you're inside somebody's mouth, all of a sudden you're going to discover something on an x-ray that you hadn't planned for your schedule that day. You have to pivot, you adjust, you, you move forward. One of the things I'll share, this is such a great conversation. We, we judge our own decisions so harshly. Did you ever mm -hmm. wear some clothes that you don't want to wear again? You don't call yourself a failure at dressing. You just don't wear them again. So just, we're so judgmental because dental school is toxic. And I know, and I'm, you know, fail forward. I, under, I like the concept, but I just think with myself to myself, because I'm a fastest maker, it's just not something I'm going to do again, right? It doesn't mean you have to be so, you know, those three out of 10 decisions, you just say, oh, I'm not going to do that again. We're not going to open at 5 a.m. because people, we thought people would come. And just don't judge yourself so harshly because then you, and focus on those seven out of 10 decisions you uh, do right. So I like, I love the, I love, you know, three P's, three R's. So we have revising and we have resolution. Was there any part of resolution before we move on to the next one? Well, there's two things in resolution also. One is efficiency. And that means that doctors have got to learn to leverage themselves in their business. So that means empowering your team members to take over the things that you need to grow your business that you're not able to do because you're only one person. So finding really good team members to be your, um, your marketing support or someone to help you with finances or leveraging a partner, whether it's a consultant or a marketing agency or a financial advisor, who's going to help you grow your business. Awesome. You are only one person. You cannot do it all. But when you leverage, you will grow so much faster and go so much farther than your competition. They won't have time to catch up. So that's another part of it, kind of resolving to be efficient. And then cash flow. You're a business owner. This is what kills people in recessions. 
So everybody wants to lock down the expenses and they just cut, cut, cut. And I know that always sounds so self-serving for a marketing agency to say, don't cut marketing, but I'm saying don't cut a lot of things. Just look for how to become more efficient in what it is you're doing. Double down in the things that are working, cut the things that aren't. Don't just cut for the sake of cutting money. By the way, Danny, and I know you're you're a dentist and human married, you work with dentists and married dentists, but this is the the script or the word phrasing I would use because dentists love this, right? Dentists love to be amateur investors, okay? So when you invest in a mutual fund, you don't expect it to pay off in the next month, but when you consistently invest in it, it pays off later. Same thing with marketing because it's not about spending $5,000 a month on advertising for the next month. It's about the lifetime value of those patients, which is what you're glad you did early. So my dentist people, whether it's working with someone, our awesome sponsor like Xania or someone else or your own person, invest in this like a mutual fund because three years from now, you're going to be glad you met the patient next month. I think the way dentists look at marketing is a lot of times I use it with fitness. I live in front of the Zoom, so all my stuff is here, my food, everything. So I have my weights here. So with fitness, and if you go to always lose 10 pounds the next week, that's not a way to run your fitness. It's to get fit and try to develop a system for the future for yourself. So I see marketing as the same way. I could not agree more. And I think that's why a lot of doctors are in the position they're in right now where they're all worried about September is because they took their eye off the ball. They weren't looking at the long-term planning part of this, the long-term investment in this because they were so busy this summer from all that pent up demand. They said, I can't get patients in. I don't need to do marketing. That's crazy. And now all of a sudden, they are having to react to a completely empty schedule, which means they're losing traction if I mean, it's, I generally find, Paul, it's like a three month turn from the time that you start doing any marketing till you're going to see the results of it. If you wait until you're dead in September to all of a sudden scramble and start your marketing again, you're not going to see those results till December. And we know nothing happens in December anyway. So now you're talking January. So that, that resolution to be committed to the plan that you're doing to stay committed to your financial fitness, your physical fitness, your marketing fitness, all of that is what's going to keep your business fiscally fit. Awesome. And then I know we have a third R. What is the recovery? Both of those put together. There's is there uh, more to the third R? Well, the recovery is really about the measurement phase of things. So I'm a big believer in KPIs, your key performance indicators. How are you going to determine that these changes you made are working? So the recovery stage happens by setting those KPIs, measuring them religiously every single week, every single month, depending on what the KPI is, and then using those new fast decision-making skills to pivot and change quickly. Don't wait till the end of the year and go, that didn't work, but make your adjustments as you go, rather than just doing these little one-off shots here and there. Take a plan, stick to it, and then you tweak the plan as you go. I mean, it's such great value and insight that you put together here with these three R's, which I you know, love revising resolution recovery. And the key performance indicator I judge in my practice is how many times I cry inside a day. I was down to like 15 <laughs> because that's part of it too. What is interesting to dentists is they think they're going to be happier if they make more money, but that's rarely the thing. They're going to be happier or less annoyed if their business is more stable. They mm-hmm provide i mean at some of the most stressful times in my dentisting career i've always thought well at least i provide a livelihood for other people to live which is my team so that's a big part of it too protecting your team and being able to pay the team that you have and this is just embrace the challenge that you have but use strategies what is so great Zani, is what we're doing right now we're on a virtual platform sharing with hundreds of thousands of dentists that didn't exist in 2002. It almost it didn't exist when I had you come and speak just four years ago, you know, right. so you can leverage to use the efficiency and have your team watch stuff like this. And don't be afraid to spend or invest in stuff that you're going to be happy you did later to get that lifetime value of customers. Every time, and I'm the same as other dentists on you, I look at something, could be marketing, could be something else we spend money on. I say, I'd rather save this money. But then I think, that thing got me that patient who did the $20,000 implant case. That thing got me that family who comes every six months and spends $1,000 in our office. And that's why whether you're a dental student watching this or a season age dentist, the key is to create 
really what we've talked about is a treatment plan for success. That's exactly what it is. That's a perfect analogy. It, it is your patients don't get their treatment plans done all at once. You're not going to do the same thing with your business. It's this lifetime initiative of growth. And I, I think that's the way to do it is to just see it as step by step progress towards getting complete health of your business. And, and you know, before we wrap up, I use, I'll share a, a, what I think is a good nacho talking tip because Arielle is going to be working in our dental office because she wants to spend as much time around the nacho world as possible. And she's a hygienist. And you're going to be honest, every hygienist, they probably get this the most. Somebody comes in, they haven't been to the dentist for years, 50% bone loss, all kinds of calculus. You know what they say? I like to whiten my teeth, right? And inside, you go nuts because you say, don't you want to do this other stuff? But it, a good answer is, that's a, really re, that's a really great goal. First, let's shift and get the foundation. Same thing for our business. Don't go to the designers or the marketers and say, I want to do Facebook ads to bring in Invisalign tomorrow. Build your foundation in the right way. And that question drives us nacho nuts when the person with 50% bone loss wants to whiten their teeth. Don't be that customer or client for your other services, whether it's marketing, financial planning, your accountant. Because if you build with a strategic way that, you know, one plus one plus one is going to equal 10 for you. So I think what you've shared is awesome. I like bringing this insight from a marketer. I always like something fun. So before we jump off, tell everybody about your, your other endeavor. Uh, that nobody complains about, makes people happy. I've never heard one person complain, I don't want to pay for this thing. Uh, what is that? So my, my other endeavor is also tied to my spouse. Um, as much as he loves being a dentist, he really, really loves beer a lot. So he launched a brewery, Jackass Brewing Company, uh, literally five days before the shutdown started. Um, but they opened back up in June and they're absolutely killing it. So um, I would say if you're in Pennsylvania, watch out. This brand is going to grow. Our goal is to take over the state. I actually admire him just for this reason, for how you feel. So when you're a dentist, people don't want to see you under the best circumstances. Even your nicest patients don't want to be there. So when you can pivot or shift and have this life where the thing that you provide, people love, that's just got to be pretty cool to do that. And it's, you know, it's a dentisting reward, you know, a reward for hard work is to get yourself some good beer. So thanks, Danny. Share with us how people can reach out to you. If they want to learn more about what you do, how they can work with Golden Proportions, could you share with our audience how to reach out to you? Absolutely. So I would say uh, jump on our website, goldenproportions.com. We actually just launched a brand new site on uh, Friday. So if you've been there before, check it out again. Gorgeous really gets into the details of how to, to work with us. Um, there's a web chat on there, so someone's always monitoring that. Um, or you can just drop me an email, a personal email at xana at goldenproportions.com. I'm happy to talk to anybody, just answer questions or bounce ideas off you. Awesome, awesome, man. I really appreciate it. You guys can always reach out to us at salsadentalnachos.com. If you want to be a guest on Spicy Toppings, just email us at salsadentalnachos.com. We can talk about the spicy things going on in the dentisting world. Thanks so much, Sonia. All right. Thanks, Paul.